Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at dynamic animations from the Android support library. Previously, there were only time based animations, and people were kind of happy. Then, however, came a big change. Material design where everything is so natural, physics based and beautiful. Recreating physics with time based animations is not the best thing to do. Now there is a support library which adds these beautiful material design animations for you. And by the end of this tutorial you will be able to create these kinds of animations. Spring animation and also fling animation. They're nice, aren't they? But first let's install the support library. So we wanna right click on references, manage nuget packages, we wanna search for dynamic animation and click on browse here. And let's install this library released by Xamarin Incorporated. There are two types of dynamic animations, spring and fling. We are gonna take a look at both of them. First we need to have some views to animate though, so let's go to the main.axml layout file and add them. So here is main.axml, we wanna right click on it and view code. The root element will be relative layout and inside it we wanna have two views. So these are just two basic views, there is nothing fancy about them. They have IDs view spring and view fling and they also have some nice material design compliant colors. Now we actually wanna code these animations, so let's go to mainactivity.cs and before we get into the actual code, I just wanna say that in this tutorial we are gonna be animating only the translation of these views. It's entirely possible to animate whatever you want, like rotation, scale or alpha. First up we need to create two view fields, so view and we wanna be using the proper namespace. This will be called view spring and we also wanna have a view view fling. Now inside the onCreate method we wanna set view spring to be equal to find view by id, the type of view is view and the id is resource.id.viewspring. We wanna do the same with view fling and now we wanna specify what happens after the view spring is clicked. So view spring dot click, we wanna subscribe to this event and we wanna call a lambda so o for object, e for event arcs, equal and greater sign for lambda, put a semicolon at the end and we wanna create a spring animation, we also wanna be using a proper namespace, it will be called spring anim and it's gonna be equal to new spring animation and we wanna supply the view which will be animated, so view spring. We wanna animate the translation along the y axis, so dynamic animation dot translation y and we also wanna supply the final position. Final position is where the view will be positioned after the animation is over. Setting it to zero means it will come back exactly to where it was when the animation started. Alright and we also wanna set the stiffness of the spring, so spring anim dot spring and we wanna set stiffness and we wanna set it to spring force dot stiffness low. We also wanna set damping ratio, so spring anim dot spring, set damping ratio and this will be spring force dot damping ratio high bouncy. We also wanna set the initial velocity, so spring anim dot set start velocity and here comes a little problem, this float start velocity is the velocity in pixels. However, it would be nice if we could specify this in density independent pixels. That way, no matter how high resolution the screen is, the movement is going to be just the same. For this, we need to create some kind of a conversion method. So let's go down, create a private float method. It will be called dp2px. It will have one parameter, float dp, and we wanna return typed value, import the namespace again, dot apply dimension, Complex unit type is dip for density independent pixels. The value is dp which is passed into this method as an argument. And for the display metrics we wanna pass in resources dot display metrics. And now we can set start velocity to dp to px minus 2000 because we wanna move up. And now all there's left to do is spring anim dot start. This is one way of doing things but there is also a way in which we will be able to reuse the same spring force for multiple animations. And it would look something like this, just create a spring force, then set its stiffness and damping ratio just like we did above here and then all there is left to do is to set spring of the animation to be equal to this created spring force. This way you can reuse the same spring force for multiple animations. But we aren't going to do that in this tutorial. And let's test if it works. So let's test the spring animation 
and it works just fine and the fling animation is not yet implemented. So let's add the fling animation, shall we? So we wanna subscribe to the click event of a view fling and here we wanna create a fling animation, fling anim, it's gonna be equal to new fling animation, the view to animate is view fling and we wanna animate translation y, so dynamic animation dot translation y and this animation is gonna alternate between going up and going down. For this to be possible we need to create another field in this activity, it's going to be a boolean field shoot fling upwards. So right up here bool shoot fling upwards and it's gonna be equal to true by default. Let's go back to the click event and we wanna set start velocity so fling anim dot set start velocity and it's again going to be converted to px from dp and if we shoot fling upwards the start velocity will be equal to minus 1500 because if we should fling upwards we want to move up and if we shouldn't fling upwards so we should fling downwards this is going to be equal to 1500. We also want to set friction of this fling anim so fling anim dot set friction for example 2 and we also want to start this animation and we also want to negate should fling upwards so should fling upwards is equal to not should fling upwards. And if you don't specify any friction, it's gonna be set to the default value, which is 1. And let's test the app. And Spring is working just as before, and now let's test the fling animation, and it's working nicely. And when we comment out this set friction, the friction is going to be 1, so it's going to be lower. And now when we run the app and test the fling animation, as you can see, the view fling has gone completely out of bounds. This is how you can use dynamic animations in your app. A really good candidate for their use is for example a floating action menu about which you can learn more by clicking on the card in the corner. Wherever you use them, dynamic animations will surely bring a new life and freshness of material design into your apps. If you wanna get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you to become a better Android developer, give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button if you don't wanna miss more videos like this. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.